let's now see question number 138 plasmid pbrc22 has pst1 restriction enzyme site within gene mpr that confers ampicillin resistance if this enzyme is used for inserting a gene for beta galactoside production and the recombinant plasmid is inserted in an e coli strain then uh, there are four options the transformed cell will have the ability to resist ampicillin as well as produce beta galactoside two it will lead to lysis of host cell three it will be able to produce a novel protein with dual ability and four it will not be able to confer ampicillin resistance to the host cell so first of all let's see this uh, artificial plasmid called pbrc22 so this uh, plasmid has been uh, just uh, derived from the e coli plasmid and developed by bolivar and uh, rodrix in their lab so this is uh, this has been developed as an ideal uh, as an ideal vector to carry the uh, foreign gene to the e coli cell and uh, establish it to perform a particular function so now uh, suppose we just uh, uh, insert a foreign gene here it is uh, the restriction site these are we can just see a number of restriction site <coughs> which can be opened with the help of restriction enzyme so one is the pst one that as we can just see that it is present in the ampicillin resistance gene site this is the gene for ampicillin resistance that saves bacteria from uh, ampicillin so here the pst1 site is acted upon by the restriction enzyme obtained from the bacteria prudentia s2rt so this is the uh, located in the ampicillin resistance gene so suppose that now it is cleaved and uh, another gene is inserted here suppose this is the gene for insulin production so it is inserted here then what will the consequence or for that matter according to this question the gene for beta galactosidase enzyme uh, uh, is uh, just inserted uh, here beta galactoside production gene is inserted here okay so this is a gene for the production of beta galactoside okay so here once the gene is inserted we may just find that uh, the ampicillin resistance gene is uh, cleaved it is broken into two fragment one is this and the other is this okay this uh, actually just uh, causes uh, the uh, production of defunct protein in two pieces which are not functional and this is why the gene for ampicillin resistance will not function okay due to insertion of the foreign gene so this is the uh, foreign gene so ampicillin resistance the gene becomes non functional and it is called insertional inactivation insertional inactivation okay and therefore uh, if uh, this bacteria if uh, the bacteria gets uh, uh, this uh, uh, clone vector this uh, cloning vector so obviously the amp resistance gene will not be functioning and uh, it will no longer be able to just give resistance to ampicillin it will not be able to save the bacteria from ampicillin if the bacteria is grown in an ampicillin containing medium so this is called insertional inactivation now in this slide we just see the different options the first one is the transformed cell will have the ability to resist to ampicillin it is wrong because ampicillin gene has been uh, uh, cleaved it has been fragmented and this is why it will no longer be able to produce the functional protein to just uh, Resist ampicillin, 
and uh, therefore no uh, protection against ampicillin will be given to the bacteria as well as uh, produce a beta galactoside so of course that is a completely uh, wrong option it will lead to lysis of host cell again it is wrong it is not going to lyse the host cell lysis means breakdown it will it will be able to produce a novel protein with dual ability uh, it is again wrong because the uh, the protein in which uh, there is an insertion of uh, the uh, beta galactosidase uh, enzyme so of course uh, it is uh, not going to be functional uh, and uh, uh, actually ampicillin uh, uh, resistance protein is not going to be functional and therefore uh, such a uh, uh, novel protein with the dual ability is not possible it will not be able to confer ampicillin resistance to the host cell it is the correct option this option is uh, correct <clears throat> okay so let's uh, now see the next question in some members of which of the following pairs of families pollen grains retain their viability for months after release one poesi leguminosi two poesi solanesi three rojesi leguminosi and four poesi rojesi so the correct option is three rojesi and leguminosi actually in some members of rojesi leguminosi and solanesi the pollen uh, just survive they just uh, uh, remain viable for months after release okay so three families are there rojesi leguminosi and uh, solanesi so in these three families the pollen grain remained viable for months even after release so let's now see the next question question number 140 which of the following statement is correct fusion of protoplasm between two motile or non motile gametes is called plasmogamy second organisms that depend on living plants are called saprophytes some of the organism can fix atmospheric nitrogen in specialized cells called sheath cells and fourth fusion of two cells is called karyogamy so first of all let's see the first option fusion of the protoplasm between the two motile or non motile gametes is called plasmogamy it is correct this statement is correct let's see some other statements organism that depend on living plants are called saprophytes it is wrong actually if the organism is very small and it just attacks the living plants so it is a parasite and if an organism is big and it simply just eats the living plants it is the predators some of the organisms can fix atmospheric nitrogen in specialized cells called sheath cells it is again wrong there is no any sheath cell in any cyanobacteria or bacteria that fix atmospheric nitrogen rather cyanobacteria just contain heterocyst specialized cells called heterocyst which are colorless and have got an enzyme called nitrogenase so uh, they just uh, Uh, fix nitrogen with the help of heterocyst but not the sheath cell so again it is wrong fusion of two cells is called karyogamy again it is wrong karyogamy is actually the fusion of the two nuclei okay so the correct option is a one uh, is one so let's now see the next question question number 141 identify the correct statement 
RNA polymerase binds with the rope factor to terminate the process of transcription in bacteria. Okay, so RNA polymerase binds with the rope factor to terminate the process of uh, transcription in bacteria. This statement is correct. Okay, the coding stand in a transcription unit is copied to an mRNA. Actually, it, this copying is not direct. Rather, mRNA is formed upon the template stand. <coughs> So let's uh, now see well, uh, option three. Aspirate gene arrangement is characteristic of prokaryotes. It is actually wrong. Rather, it is uh, this kind of arrangement in which uh, the genes are, uh, uh, aspirate genes are those, those that are uh, divided into the introns and exons. So exons, introns, exons and introns. So exons are useful sequences. They are uh, use, useful sequences. And introns are uh, useless sequences to be removed. to be spliced out. The HNRNA. So in eukaryotes, when the RNA is formed, so exon and intron, both sequences, sequences are derived from the DNA. However, intron sequences are unnecessary and they are removed a process that is called RNA splicing. And uh, the mRNA that is formed with uh, the uh, intervening intron sequences are called uh, HNRNA. So when HNRNA is uh, uh, subject to RNA splicing, when introns are removed, when uh, capping and telling is done, then mRNA is formed. And therefore, aspirin genes, aspirin genes uh, with the uh, exon and intron are characteristics of eukaryotes and not prokaryotes. In capping, methyl guanosine triphosphate is added to the three end of HNRNA. Again, it is wrong. Uh, it is uh, uh, added to the five end of HNRNA. HNRNA stands for uh, heterogeneous nuclear RNA. It stands for heterogeneous nuclear RNA. Now let's uh, see the uh, next question. Question number 142. So here, we just uh, first of all see that uh, one uh, A, so A just uh, corresponds to proteins are synthesis. Uh, first, uh, let's see the uh, things that are there in this one. S phase, G2 phase, <coughs> quiescent phase, stage, and G1 phase. And uh, list two contains proteins are synthesized in active phase, uh, interval between mitosis and uh, initiation of uh, DNA replication. <coughs> DNA replication. So here, uh, SFH corresponds to the fourth. It just involves DNA replication, okay? And uh, B, G2 phage is uh, the phage in which uh, proteins are synthesized. Quiescent stage uh, is inactive uh, stage. And uh, G1 phage is uh, one uh, that uh, uh, that is uh, associated with the uh, inter interval between mitosis and initiation of DNA replication. So here's a G1 phase. So as we just uh, see the mitotic cycle, so here 
it is the M phase with the pro phase, meta phase, ana phase, telo phase, and uh, in this way, and cytokinesis. So it is the M phase, pro phase, meta phase. Enophage, telophage, and uh, cytokinesis. So it is the M phage or mitotic phage. Now This is the G1 phage, also known as the post mitotic uh, gap. It is the S phage, it is the phage of synthesis, synthetic phage, and it is the G2 phage, also called the pre mitotic gap. So, here, these three phages, G1, S, and G2 phage, so they just uh, make the interphage. So it is about the cell. It is the, uh, the condition of a cell that is continuously dividing. However, if the cell stops uh, dividing, so this G1 phase continues as uh, the quiescent phase, inactive phase, okay? So just uh, given these, uh, uh, this matching, option two is uh, correct. A4, B1, C2, and D3, okay? So let's now see. The next question, question 143. So it is a matching type of question. <coughs> so yeah, here, let's uh, first of all, see what has been given. Proteins, unsaturated fatty acid, nucleic acid, polysaccharide. And uh, here there are certain uh, bonds that just make them. So first of all, let's see protein. Let's now see CC bond, double bond, phosphodiester bonds, glycosidic uh, bonds, and peptide bond. Peptide bond uh, just forms a protein. Glycosidic bond is the bond between the sugars to make the polysaccharide. Phosphodiester bond is the bond uh, between the uh, uh, between the phosphate with uh, the two sugars. Okay that uh, just connects the one nucleotide to the other nucleotide, okay? That is found in the nucleic acid. And uh, C double bond C, unsaturation, is found in unsaturated fatty acid. So here now we can just connect it. So protein is with a peptide bond. Unsaturated, unsaturated fatty acid has got the C double C double bond. Nucleic acid has got the phosphodiester bond and polysaccharide has got the glycosidic bond. And uh, here, if we just see the options, so A with four, so two are there with four, then uh, uh, B, unsaturated fatty acid. So it is concerned with one. So it is in option four, that is one. And uh, C with two and uh, D with three. So the correct option is four. Let's now see the next question. Nowadays, it is possible to detect the mutated gene uh, <coughs> causing cancer by allowing a radioactive probe to hybridize its uh, complementary DNA in a clone of cells, followed by its uh, detection using autoradiography. Nowadays, it is possible to detect the mutated gene causing cancer by allowing radioactive probe to hybridize its uh, complementary DNA in a clone of cells, followed uh, by its uh, detection using autoradiography. Because first, the mitotic, uh, mutated gene comple completely and clearly appears on a photographic plate. Second, mutated gene does not appear on a photographic film as the probe has no complementarity with it. Three, 
mutated gene does not appear on photographic plate, a photographic film, as the probe has a complementary project. And uh, four, mutated gene partially appears on photographic film. So the correct option is here too. Now, let's uh, just uh, have the concept of radioactive probe. A radioactive probe is a single standard DNA. In keeping, keeping in view, the certain target uh, DNA that we have to find out. Okay, so uh, suppose there's a single standard DNA and it, uh, it is radioactive and it has got the complementary sequence of uh, the DNA, of one strand of the DNA that we just try to find out. Okay, so this is the uh, molecular probe. This is called the radioactive probe or molecular probe. Okay. So it is the radioactive, it may have the titrated thymine. The benefit of its uh, radioactivity is that when we just put uh, the photographic plate upon it, so it leaves the mark, it leaves the mark on the photographic plate. And this technique is called auto radiography. This uh, technique of detecting the uh, molecular probe with the help of a photographic plate is called uh, auto radiography. Okay. So now, uh, if uh, a mutated gene causes cancer, we have got many genes in our body that uh, relate to the cell division. They are called the proto-oncogenes. And mutation, when mutation takes place, so they just uh, make defective protein which is not able to regulate the cell division in our body. And now this gene that, is, that has got mutated, it becomes the oncogene. And uh, due to mutation, it, uh, uh, now it is no longer complementing with uh, the molecular probe that has, that has been meant to find out the proto-oncogene. So suppose this is one strand of the proto-oncogene after denaturation, so that two can hybridize. The two can hybridize. However, if uh, there's a single strand of uh, the oncogene, so here and here, no hybridization. And when we subject uh, to gel electrophoresis and uh, uh, southern blotting, and uh, when we apply uh, upon the uh, DNA of oncogene, the molecular probe, we just try to hybridize them by spreading it, spreading the radioactive probe on the uh, nylon membrane. But uh, no uh, pairing will occur, no hybridization of uh, uh, DNA will take place. And uh, when we wash the nylon membrane, so the uh, radioisotope, the, the radioactive probe will be washed out, not able to just uh, pair with, not able to hybridize with uh, the oncogene, whereas it could hybridize with the proto oncogene, but it no longer uh, just hybridizes with the oncogene due to different sequence of the oncogene. So it will be washed out and it will not figure out in the photographic film as we just put the photographic film on uh, the uh, nylon membrane. So uh, there will not be any presence of uh, any uh, molecular probe because the molecular probe has not just got fixed along with uh, the uh, oncogene. It has not hybridized hab uh, and uh, therefore it has been washed out. Okay. So uh, this is the use of uh, the molecular probe and the technique of auto radiography, as also the technique of southern blotting. Now let's see question number one forty five. In the in the exponential growth equation, n t is equal to n not e r t. So uh, e represents e represents the base of exponential uh, logarithm, the base of natural logarithm, the base of geometric logarithm, and the base of uh, number logarithm.
So the correct option is two, the base of a natural logarithm. So its value is approximately 2.718. Okay. So here, E just stands for base to the natural logarithm. Let's now just move over to the next question. Which of the following statement is incorrect? Stoma lively have a PS1 only and lack an ADP reductase. Okay. So Stoma lively have uh, mostly PS1 and uh, NADP reductase is indeed uh, uh, absent here. Next, Dana Lamley have both PS1 and PS2. Dana Lamley have uh, both PS1 and PS2. It is correct. Cyclic photophosphorylation involves both PS1 and PS2. It is uh, wrong. Cyclic photophosphorylation uh, involves only PS1 and not a PS2. Both ATP and NADPH plus H plus are synthesized during non-cyclic photophosphorylation. So of course it is again correct that during non-cyclic photophosphorylation, ATP and NADPH are produced. So ATP plus NADPH plus H plus are produced during non-cyclic uh, photophosphorylation. That is called the assimilating or reducing power of light reaction. And uh, of course, uh, uh, it is formed during non-cyclic electron transport and non-cyclic uh, photophosphorylation. In cyclic uh, photophosphorylation, only ATP is formed and a DPH plus H plus is not formed. Stoma lamely have PS1 only and uh, therefore it cannot just uh, uh, undergo uh, non-cyclic electron uh, transport and therefore only ATP is produced and a DPH2 is not produced and therefore uh, it also doesn't have the NADPH reductase. Rena Lamley have uh, both PS1 and PS2, it is uh, uh, correct. And uh, uh, this is why non cyclic electron transport is uh, possible in Rena Lamley, whereas it was not possible in Astoma Lamley. Cyclic photophosphorylation involves both PS1 and PS2, it is wrong because uh, only PS1 is involved. The electrons just uh, they get emitted from PS1 when uh, the sunlight comes upon the uh, photosystem one, PS1. And uh, after passing through a number of electron acceptors, electrons just come back to pigment system one. So PS2 is not needed, okay? So the correct option is the three because the statement is wrong. So let's now see question number 140. So, match list one with the list two. Natrococcus, rhizobium, thiobacillus, natrobacter. These are uh, the four type of bacteria. And uh, here the processes involved are denitrification, conversion of ammonia of uh, nitrite, conversion of nitrite to nitrate, and conversion of atmospheric nitrogen to ammonia. Okay. So first of all, uh, let's uh, see nitrococcus. So nitrococcus uh, is a bacteria that is able to convert the ammonia into nitrite. Okay, so here nitrosococcus uh, just converts uh, the ammonia, atmospheric, uh, uh, the ammonia produced uh, due to ammonification after death of the organism into nitrite. Rhizobium converts atmospheric nitrogen to ammonia. 
further uh, nitro batter converts uh, conversion of nitrate to uh, nitrate to nitrate and tha bacillus is causes the denitrification okay so here the tha tha bacillus uh, denitrification is a full name so it just uh, uh, causes the denitrification that is the conversion of nitrate into atmospheric nitrogen denitrification is conversion of let's say minus into n2 so here if we just see the match if we just see the matching so we find that uh, here this is this this is this option 4 is correct the correct option is option 4 okay so a 2 b 4 C one and D three. Let's now see the next question. Question number one forty eight. In dicot leaves, vascular bundles are here are some uh, facts and uh, here are some uh, statement. So we have to just find the correct pair. So in dicot leaf, vascular bundles are surrounded by large thick wall cells. Called conjunctive tissue, it is wrong. Conjunctive tissue is actually the gap between the xylem and phloem in the roots. In roots, where the radical vascular bundles are there. So xylem and phloem are present on the separate periphery, and the gap in between the gap in between the two. is called conjunctive tissue cells of medullary rays that form part of uh, cambial ring so interfacicular cambium it is correct so some cells of uh, the pith ray or medullary ray just uh, gets uh, uh, transformed into uh, the interfacicular cambium that and in this way it, it just completes the cambial ring part of cambium already present in between xylem and phloem of the dicotestem as a intrafascicular cambium so loose parenchyma cells rupturing the epidermis and forming a lens shaped opening in a bark so a spongy parenchyma it is again wrong okay so loose parenchyma cells rupturing the epidermis and forming a lens shaped opening in a bark so this is the this opening is called lentil cell so next large colorless empty cells in the epidermis of grass leaves so subsidiary cell again it is wrong because it is the the bully form cells okay so here in dicot leaves the vascular bundles are surrounded by large thick walled cells which are known as the bundle sheath it will be bundle sheath and uh, ground tissue cells of medullary ray that form part of cambial ring is interfascicular cambium loose parenchyma cells rupturing the epidermis and forming a lens shaped opening in the bark so it is the second the cortex or philoderm and uh, just uh, forms lentisa now large colorless empty cells in the epidermis of a grass cell is called a bully form cell so the correct option is to okay interfascicular cambium here it is a the endodermis and uh, these are vascular bundles
So in between xylem and phloem, there's an intrafascicular cambium. Yes. Okay. And uh, it is the, the phloem. And it is a xylem. And in between xylem and phloem, there is the intrafascular cambium. However, and it is a pith. And uh, these are pith rays or medullary rays. Pith is also called medulla. And uh, pith rays or medullary rays. are here, it is endodermis. And these are vascular bundles. So a part of medullary ray just completes the cambial ring. So here it gets converted to intervascular cambium. And this uh, completes the cambial ring. in this way. So this is the interfascicular cambium. Whereas uh, these are intrafascicular cambium. It is the intrafascicular cambium. and the two combine together, and the two combine together to form the vascular cambium. Okay, so let's now see, so the option two is correct. Now let's see, question number 149, match column one with column two. So here we just uh, see certain uh, floral formulas, so these are the floral formula. Floral formulae. And these are families of the flowering plants. So we have to now just uh, see the correct uh, matching. So here, we just uh, see, first of all, uh, A. So we just uh, see here the bisexual nature, the gamosepalous condition, and uh, the petals in three groups, one, two, two. So quite naturally, it must be a standard. It must be wings. It may be keel. And uh, the diadal first condition in stamens a superior ovary. So th this uh, just connects with family C. Okay. Now the second one, uh, B. This 5, 5, A5 five, and G2. There's a bicarpellate. It's still is there. Bi the ovary is bicarpellate. It is bilocular. And uh, it is a feature of solenacy. Further, C is that, uh, uh, as we can just see, that uh, the floral parts are in the multiple of three. So it is a tri, uh, you can say, it is a trimerous flower and uh, it is a feature of uh, family lilia C. Okay. And uh, Lastly, K2 plus 2, C4, A2, 4, G2. So this is uh, the feature of family Brassicaceae. Okay, more so because uh, the, there are six uh, stamens, two are uh, uh, small and four are large, that is known as a tetradynamous condition. So this is the feature of uh, Brassicaceae.
okay so here uh, if we just uh, see the following options so we find that option four is correct okay well let's now see question 150 the last question of uh, botany what is the role of rna polymerase 3 in the process of transcription in uh, uh, eukaryotes so first it transcribes transfer rna fibrous rna and uh, snrna that's a short nuclear rna second transcribes precursor of mrna third transcribes ribosomal rna and fourth transcribes ribosomal rna 28s 18s and 5.8s okay so here the uh, if we just uh, see the function of uh, the three types of rna polymerases found in uh, rna uh, found in eukaryotes so we just uh, see the following con condition that i am just uh, going to write below So, RNA polymerase one. So this uh, just uh, forms the ribosomal RNA. Then the twenty eight S, eighteen S, and uh, five point eight S. Okay, RNA. Polymerase two forms the precursor of mRNA. And uh, RNA, Pol three. Forms a transfer and five S ribosomal RNA, five S ribosomal RNA, and a short nuclear RNA. So, this is the function of RNA Pol 3. So, here the correct option is a one. Okay. So RNA Pol3 does not uh, uh, form the precursor of mRNA. It does not uh, just transcribe only snRNA, okay? And uh, it also does not transcribe ribosomal RNA. So the correct option is one. So all the best to all the children who are waiting for the result. Thank you.